Rebecca with How to Lead a Life Group with Confidence Part 3, Creating a Warm and Welcoming Environment. What does a warm and welcoming environment look like? Because we all have a different idea of what it may be. Some people love pet bulls, but that's not super warm and welcoming, is it? And other people love blasting death metal music, but for the most part, people don't care for that either. So you get the point. Here's what a warm and welcoming environment looks like at FCC. A place where you can feel at home, even if it's your first time to visit. So I wanna break it down into two parts, things to do before your guests arrive, and then discuss some things that we're gonna do when your guests arrive. So let's get started. Before your guests come into your home, you wanna make sure of a couple of things. One, have the house tidied up. If you have kids like we do, there's always stuff all over the floors. So let's pick it up. Let's put the cats and dogs away. If you have 10 cats, you may want to use a bottle of Febreze or consider a host home. We also like to play Christian music, playing in the background just to break any of the awkward silence if there is any. We want the house to smell nice. Maybe did you cook Mexican food for dinner the night before or fry some chicken for dinner? Bad smells can definitely be a distraction. So you light a candle, pop a plug in in the wall, something to make the home smell welcome. Have some refreshments or even dinner if it's appropriate. At our life group, we always have dinner. There's just something special about sharing a meal together. It allows for time, free time to talk, get to know each other. Josh and I always provide the first meal and then we have a dinner sign-up sheet for others to commit to bringing dinner each week during the semester. This is a great way to provide ownership and keeps our group members accountable. For us, we provide water and then we ask people to bring tea, a dinner, and dessert. Now I want you to know dinner doesn't have to be anything special. It can be spaghetti, chili, jambalaya, anything. And here's an example of our dinner sign-up sheet. Super simple, but it works wonders. I text the day before our group to remind whoever signed up for dinner for the following day and that we can't wait to see them. Lastly, something to consider is how your living room is set up. We're looking to create an environment conducive for a dialogue. We want people interactive and talking back and forth. So sitting in a circle facing each other is best, opposed to sitting in rows like we did in school or in church. And if you don't have a ton of furniture, it is okay. Folding chairs are work perfect. So that was pre-guest. So we're going to take care of all of these things before our guests arrive. Now let's move on to when our guests get here. You want to greet them at the door. Yes, it's super simple, but super important. Also, if you have pets, remember we aren't sure how our guests feel about them, so put them up. As you greet your guests, introduce yourself if you have not met them already. No matter what, shake their hand and give them a hug. It just sends a warm message right off the bat. When they walk in, have them put a name tag on because most of us can't remember everyone's name and hopefully we have some new people attending. You'll want to honor those who come on time by starting on time. Our goal is to bless the food right at about six o'clock, eat for 20 or 30 minutes, and then start our Bible study at 630. This doesn't mean some can't come late or earlier if they're just getting off work or whatever the case may be, but we want to honor our expected start and finish time, especially considering many members have children. All right, so I have given you all of the how-tos. Now it's time to put them into action and watch your guests feel comfortable and welcoming as they step into your home for your life group, which will soon become theirs.